Hey guys, so Cricket South Africa, they held their annual, or they held a conscious, a coaches press conference recently, or not a press conference, a conference recently, where all the coaches in South Africa, or some of the big names, um, all went together and got together to discuss certain ways of going forward with regards to Cricket South Africa and the coaching, etc. And um, I thought that it would be a brilliant opportunity for me to react to this particular video that they released recently and um, go through the points that have been made by certain coaches in this particular video because I think that's a brilliant op- I thought it was a brilliant topic for the for the daily show um, and it's a good way to start the week um, but before we get going before we get started there's a couple of things I love you guys to please do please subscribe to this channel click that notification bell for all future videos don't forget to smash the like button comment and share and also, there's a couple of the else of other notifications that I would also like you guys to also do, and that's also download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. And you can help us um, do the things that we do here at Cricket Fanatics magazine, including our, our aim to, in the future, maybe help um, cricket grow in South Africa by becoming a patron today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. I want you guys to join this community because we want to give you guys as fans an opportunity to to join a community, to be part of a community where you guys can share your thoughts, you can share your opinions without being judged for them really. Um, so it's, it's a place where you guys can, re- this is a, a community that I really want you guys to, to, to get a part of so that you can feel comfortable to give your opinions and share your thoughts. Also go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all regular updates. So without further ado, let me get straight into today's video. Looking forward to chatting to you guys today. A very good evening and we are back and we are live for another episode of Cricket Fanatics Magazine, The Daily Show. I'm your host, Khalid Moedin, and today we will be discussing the coaches conference that took place um, recently. Um, There's a couple of things that maybe I just need to go through. So before we get into the reaction of the actual video, um, we need to obviously know, know that this is a very positive, in my opinion, I think a very positive move. Um, from a cricket South Africa to hold or host something of the caliber because it gets coaches in one room and gets them to explain or explore certain ideas to go forward and to keep South Africa's um, cricket strong. So I'm gonna come into I'm gonna go into the reaction of the of the video. Um, we did upload it to the YouTube channel and some of you might have watched it, but you never got to see my reaction to it. And I never watched it in for this purpose alone. I wanted to react to this live on the show with you guys so you can see what i think think straight from my brain onto the the mic to you guys at home so that you can see exactly what i think about this fresh new without maybe thinking too deeply about um so we can see how my thoughts will progress obviously from the start of this video till the end of this video based on what has been said in this press conference so or not in this press conference in this conference i keep saying that i'm so used to saying press conferences when i'm talking about cricket so let's get into it. Today we are at the Cricket South Africa Coaching Conference where all the coaches around the country come together and look at the past season and see what, take out the learnings um, that we can take, we can look to improve for going forward in terms of the next season coming. I think like meetings like these you know, like are quite important. I mean, they're just listening to the coaches talking about like that brand of cricket that they want to play, which is quite... They actually spelled Jeffrey Diana's name wrong there. That's a massive blip. Quite positive, because in the past, I mean, like, like we've been quite conservative, you know, like not... like being scared to lose, you know, like if I may put it like that, but the coaches have come up and they're giving us, you know, like, like a clear plan. It's um, massively important. Uh, the fact that the, all the coaches in, in, involved in our professional game can sit, to, sit together um, 
all day, share ideas, um, share our vision for. So Who's on that board? Let's go straight. Let's go back quickly. Let's see who's on that board. Can you guys see? Uh, I, I know this is a hedgehog. Um, we call it the hedgehog. I call it the hedgehog theory, basically, or the hedgehog diagram, um, where you where ideas obviously cross over. Um, so you have different goals and views that may that um that you see as a vision, and then where those all interlink in the middle with the shady parties, where scattered in. That's your your sweet haven, basically, or your or your special spot or your sweet spot. Um, I can't really see what it says here, so it's cool. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. Maybe you can tell me what it says on those on those on those um three. Um, share our vision for South African cricket, and feel that that everybody's got um, a part to play in this. I think that's the critical bit for me. Is that whilst I might uh, be the oh, there we go. Protest, this oh, best version. Continuous. I'm still reliant on every other coach okay. that works in the system, and and it's important that uh, coaches understand that. And certainly myself, as the head coach, having sat in that same room for what close to 20 years as a as a provincial coach, I fully understand the role that domestic coaches play as well. Like anything, the the job for the people in cricket is to grow. Um, and for us as coaches to come together, discuss ideas uh, from a national point of view, discuss the style of play that we're looking to implement in the national side and uh, get the collective buy-in and collective thinking on it uh, is, is hugely important. So, yeah, to have the coaches all together, it's, so one, and, um, it's always a great day of cricket conversation and discussion and a good collaborative effort, I reckon. Yeah, the biggest... So that's cool. They, they spoke about the vision that they're going to think about the 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 vision and the the way forward with regards to the brand of cricket as well across the country and I think that's quite smart from my in my opinion because if you can communicate with with different coaches on what your vision is as a South African unit then they can also help you prepare certain players that you have your eye on so we saw this with um with my interview with my with Amanda Mashimbi um the uh, the coach, the Titans of the uh, the Titans coach, head coach. We saw this with him, where he mentioned those type of things he, when he when he's speaking about Diego Brevis, and he said that um, he also has to wait and see what the vision for C uh, CS what vision CSA have for the likes of Diego, and then move accordingly when it comes to the Titans. So it's good to have these meetings so that everybody is on the same page and we know what direction we are going. Best things for me, I think the two like national coaches, you know, talking to us as a group, uh, like being open and honest, and to talking about. Oh, there we go. This version conditions and opposition bring. Okay. Their plans, you know, like moving forward. I think like that was a, a top takeout. Like for every coach, yeah, I mean, like the great learnings, like from the experiences, you know, like of Shukri Conrad, uh, you know, like and the experiences as well, you know, like of a Rob Walter. I mean, like their insights were quite helpful to us as coaches. And I think we can connect some more as well with them, just chat, you know, to them about their experiences and how they would like us to move forward as well in terms of bringing up the players that we're going to produce for them. Yeah, the whole conference is, is vitally important for us as coaches. Uh, if I have to take out one thing, um, we unprecedentedly look we're moving into the new era. We've got two coaches uh, in our system, a red ball and a white ball coach. And they address the teams in terms of collaboratively working together and making sure that we achieve a common goal, uh, which is going out and winning the World Cup. And um, yes, 2027 is what is quite important. Um, Wait a minute. So, uh, aim of 2027 over here, again, another emphasis on 2027, even though 2023 is important for a lot of us. Um, I think that that probably will be a stepping stone tournament for them to try and see where they can improve. So, Cricket World Cup, WTC, and all format rankings, that equals greatness, they are saying over here. So, interesting. But in all of that, as a collective coaches, we need to make sure that we support them. 
and achieve that important goal, not only 2027, but also start winning now so that we can bring in sponsors into the game yeah. and make sure that we grow the game. Yeah, look, I think our DNA is a, is a work in progress. Um, but I think the, the, the building blocks have been laid and I think um, everybody leaves here with a clearer understanding of, of what we are hoping to achieve. Our obvious goal is the World Test Championship in the Test Space and, and the World Cup in the, in, 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 the, in the White Ball Space in 2027, but we, who knows, we might fluke something along the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. Um, so, yeah, by... I reckon the next six to 12 months, I think we would have embedded what that playing DNA and playing philosophy would be like. Um, but today it was, was like really important in uh, laying the, the foundation for that. Uh, look, I think the stronger your identity is. Um... Yeah, that was funny. Uh, Love how Shukri says we might fluke something along the way, but that shows the clear vision. Um, the vision is, the aim is 2027. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, the, the aim is 2027. Now, my concern about that is that it's a very long time. It's eight years. So there's a lot of the pl current players involved at the moment that might not even be in the vision for that future of 2027. So I would like to see if that's the aim and we have a clear goal and a clear plan that that is the aim, that is the goal, winning tournaments in that um, in those years, in that year, then in my opinion, we need to start seeing some of the building blocks being being laid down right now or the foundation being set right now i want we want to obviously see then it's a a sides and um we want to see some emerging sides um with some players in them that could possibly be part of the squad and the team dynamic in 2027 so that's a clear plan um going forward and i think that's an interesting one um i've started saying and i actually think we will look something at the at, at it might be a champions trophy, but I actually think that's something we will win. Um, Lauren's saying, I really hope we're not putting Cricket World 23 on a back burner. We're in no position to not worry about World Cups. Yes, 2027 is the vision, but it doesn't mean you give up winning right now. And I don't think there will be. I think they will give it their best shot. But um, by Shukri saying... <laughs> saying uh, we might fluke something along the way. If you're taking that literally, then that obviously means that we might not have the, 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 we might not be ready to completely fully um, f win a World Cup in the way that we would like or in a dominating way. We could get lucky. We could um, maybe um, get a good draw and then come out on top. Um, we could certain things like that could possibly happen um, and I don't think the intention will be to this coast until we get to 2027 I mean every game that you want to play you need to want to win and I'm sure that the, 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 the coaches think the same way I mean based on my conversations with the both of them that was the that was the vibe I got that you know every match is important every game is one by one one game at a time um, but it's make it. It seems to me like 2027 is a. Um, there's no. There's no. Um, it's the main aim, of course, and there's going to be no excuses when it, if it doesn't happen. I think they're going to be putting a lot of emphasis on that, and and they obviously have been. Um, I don't think it's people's heads going to be rolling if we don't necessarily do well in 2023 i think in uh, unless we are taking steps backward rather than taking steps forward as long as there's progress i think that we can see a proper solid unit and vision being built in cricket south africa the more consistent you can be so from from our point of view it's have a really uh, strong handle on what our dna is um, and from a coaching point of view how do we reinforce the DNA, how do we build on it, um, how do we create a real clarity around what that looks like for our players. So yeah, I mean as I said, the stronger the identity, uh, the stronger the DNA, the more consistent the performance will be. Still refining the DNA, um, as we've seen in the past um, 24, 36 months, 
uh, the game of cricket has moved forward a lot in how England have won the um, 2019 World Cup and how the teams are looking to play the game going forward. So as Cricket South Africa, we are on a fact finding mission in terms of the past two seasons where we are interrogating of what is our DNA and um, what is it looking like and what each player should know coming into our system in terms of what we're looking for. So in answering you, it's, it's a revolving um, question in terms of we looking to answer and making sure that we achieve that by 2027. I don't sound like a long time away. But um, it yeah, it's a work in progress in terms of the DNA is concerned. I think communication and, and I like to use the word engagement is critical um, for, for, for coaches to understand that our relationship is paramount ultimately we we in the business of getting cricketers to move from a certain space into another and getting them better and, and for us to understand that all of us have a role to play. Um, so today was, was, as I mentioned earlier, really important for us as head coaches to engage the domestic coaches and to also clarify roles for, for them and, and also make clear what our position is in terms of the type of cricketers we look for so that when they go back into their provincial spaces they've got a, a really good idea of what we're looking for i think it's that i like true. that's probably my favorite part of the video so far it's about creating a connect between domestic cricket and international cricket and of course shukri will be involved with the sa team and emerging team so a connection between that level as well so that the coaches when before I never, th you would see a clash basically. You'd see players playing in certain positions um, when it comes to domestic cricket, but then they don't play the same positions for the pro tiers. So they're learning different. They 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 mixing mentalities ultimately because, for example, a number six in cricket, as from a batting perspective, has a different type of mentality and is learning different habits to what a number four or number three or even a number five to an extent is is um, used to. So um, you need to find that coherency and, and you have to find that um, combinations with regards to there needs to be a, con a congruent plan when it comes to a mentality when it comes to these players. You need to have them thinking the same way and then getting better and better and better and improving not being confused and not knowing when to play. We've seen players go from opening the batting to batting three to batting five to batting all over the place. Um, so, and especially in white ball cricket, where mentality uh, with regards to attacking mentality comes into play a lot more than in test cricket. Although we know that Shukri Conrad is a type of coach that wants to play a more aggressive, attacking brand of cricket naturally. And we could be seeing... Um, that type of brand being implemented within test cricket in white ball cricket is a lot it is a lot more important to have your six for example come in and being able to win your matches in a chase or um take you to a winning to an unreachable total in if you bat first and that takes a certain type of mentality so if you are you have been given that responsibility at domestic cricket already you already will be comfortable when it comes to coming into the national stage. Then the only thing you really have to learn is not something about your own self and your game. It's about the standard and it will be about settling in international cricket. But the rest will be instinctive. A bad ball is a bad ball, whether it be in, in, in domestic cricket or whether it be in international cricket. The only, way, the only difference between um, facing that bad ball is the pressure. So... There are certain things that need to become second nature and has to become a habit, in my opinion, because then those if if those things are instinctive, then when a player moves up the the um, into a different um, level of cricket, you're not necessarily going to feel that jump. You're not necessarily going to feel it as much. It will be a more mental um, shift and change that you have to worry about, uh, and and obviously settling your nerves. Um, so I do like that from Shukri and what he said there connect with the coaches i think it's something that we don't do like lots of and i think it's something that we can do more of to be honest just to connect and get some ideas you know like in terms of the thinking from the top and uh, you know us as coaches at any level 
just to make sure that we are still aligned, you know, like, like as, um, as South Africa, because I really, really believe that, that the Proteas are the main teams. So us, you know, are just working below, you know, like I think it's important that we try to produce the talent, you know, first, and then they get good players with good attitudes to go to the Proteas and then like, represent the country. Uh, cricket, uh, we do believe that it's going to be sustained sustainable bars playing winning cricket. Um, it's, no, it's no doubt that um, people want to be associated with the winning team and we need to make sure that we prepare our players in a way that they are playing winning cricket to attract sponsors and that will sustain the game. At the end of the day, we, in the performance business, we need to win games and that's what sponsors want to be associated with. I suppose the starting point is always a successful team. Um, yeah, sponsors are also very important. I mean, South Africa haven't had a decent sponsors for a very long time. And it's something that we need to improve and it's something we need to be better at. Um, we, we need to focus on these things so that we can become a brand that is feared again. Because at the moment, we're not. Um, we, are, we are a brand that is not feared anymore. I feel, um, I don't think that if we want to ever be compete with the best, we need to put, place ourselves higher up on that, on that, on that list. And we need to get that respect so that we can compete with the likes of India, Australia, and England. Even when it comes to certain power pools that those teams have, it's not, it's not, it is what it is. The reality is that those three teams run cricket in the world, but it's not impossible to catch up and to position yourself in a stronger position, which I feel that South Africa has the minds and it has the fan base and it has the power to be able to do so. We just need to um, do things the right way and start winning games, ultimately. Yeah, South Africans are strong sports supporters and lovers. They yeah, said it. And they love, a, they love a winning team. And uh, for us, it's about playing really good cricket while we're trying to win so that uh, we can inspire and unite a pe uh, you know, set of people who watch the game. I think it's hugely important for us to appreciate uh, the privilege of being able to inspire and unite people. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, as we... As we look to do that, I think the game becomes sustainable um, because uh, you know, people back uh, successful sides, they back uh, teams that they believe in. Um, uh, having a team that people want to go and watch is, is important. So all of that feeds into, into the sustainability of the, of the sport. But in the same breath, through inspiring people, we want to inspire the youth. Uh, we want to continue to grow what our team looks like. Um, it's been awesome to see how the, the crowds have changed in complexion in terms of what uh, the people are that are watching the game of cricket. Um, obviously, I've been away for seven years, so to come back and see all the different uh, nation nationalities watching the game and enjoying the game and being inspired by the protests has been hugely satisfying. So we want to keep doing that and I think that will make the game sustainable. Yeah, making the game sustainable, also a very good plan, I mean, also a very good vision. Um, we need to. Um, to keep South Africa alive in this country, we need to. And we play a massive part as well in this. We play a massive part um, We play a massive part in, in keeping this game alive. Um, Kicker Fanatics magazine is supposed to be a, a, a community for the fans where you guys get to freely just give your opinions. It's not just about what I think and what I feel. I mean, I would like to be the, the, your guide on the journey to becoming better, to becoming fanatics down the line. And that would be the, the main aim for me, for you guys, is to, to just be that guide for you, bring information to you, bring content to you, give you a different perspective maybe of thinking of things and bringing great guests to the show that can give you insight into cricket from a different point of view from behind the scenes. And we're planning to do that this week. I mean, that's why I bring players on the show for you guys to interact with. I'm planning on talking to Jason Smith tomorrow. So please, guys, join the show and ask him questions. Tell your friends also uh, about this, uh, the, 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 the interviews that we do do because it's your only chance, really, to ask these players questions directly and get your questions answered. And that's why I, I do these shows live for you. It's not for my benefit necessarily. It's more for your guys' benefit so that you guys can also ask questions because it helps. It will help you also get a different idea or thought process of what players actually think about the game who are currently playing in the system so i'm aiming to do that I've, I've asked a couple of other guys as well and i'm waiting for them to get back to me to see um if they're available also this week and i'm going to bring you some exclusive interviews as daily shows this week
um, live on the show, of course, if we can get them then. Otherwise, if they're not available, it will be obviously uploaded. But then in that case, there's no opportunity to ask questions. But if we go live with an exclusive, it's your opportunity to ask questions. Rana says, I know we all want SA to win the 2023 World Cup, but all we want to see is progress. Our last World Cup semi-final was in 2015, so if we can get to a playoff, that would be a progress, and it definitely will be. But not only just progress by fluking it or just getting through, I would also like to see progress from a level of the way we play, the approach, the mentality. You know, I don't mind losing if you put in 100% effort. Uh, I don't want to see what we saw in the last T20 World Cup where players looked like they had no energy. And that's that's a, a big no-no in my opinion. Um, I would like to also, uh, I would also like them to focus more on selecting a set side. So if 2027 is division, take a year or two where you give opportunities to players, but after that, pick your best side for two years straight. And I agree with you. I think it should even be longer than that. I think that um, we should be building up um, five years from the World Cup. We should be building up to that. You know, five years from the from the next World Cup, we should be already seeing a, a DNA form, a, a, a team of players with backups. The SAA side should be pr primarily a second a, a second Proteus 11, uh, and then the emerging side, a few even ahead of that. And I would like to see players get an opportunity and not just chop and change every single time when the player doesn't perform because form is um, relative when it comes in cricket because um, there's various reasons for, for falling out of form. And also it's a sport where you where you lose more than you succeed ultimately majority or you fail more than you succeed ultimately um Harley, there's a rumor in the report that csa managed to strike a deal with some international company as a title sponsor for the proteas there was some news about sponsorship coming in csa i heard about that um i did not hear anything beyond the scenes i've only i only know from from the reports that have that have been given I mean, I haven't really. I took some time off now recently, guys, for for Eid, um, and I needed obviously a break from from everything because I've been doing this for three and a half years. Every single day, um, a, a show live. Um, I do a magazine every single month, and I do news re news pieces as well for this. Well, not news pieces, but I do features and and articles for the website as well. So this has been going on for for a while now, um, and yeah, it's been quite tough to it's been quite tough to um keep up with everything um over this uh over this period so you can see i'm a little bit rusty i'm a little bit slower with regards to um like i than i usually usually am um so yeah it's uh, it will get better um i'm t i'm gonna be back again we're gonna be gonna give you shows every single day again and daily shows um, so that that's what we are for. Let me update you on some couple of other things. Um, there has been also some news that broke recently um, from David about David Beddingham. Um, the story was released on Sport 24 um, that the, the former Western Province batsman David Wynn will return to the franchise for 2023-24, which I told you guys will happen um, based on my conversations with the player. Um, I just did not put a piece out with regards to that because I was hoping that we could get into convert into him on a on a show and and, and obviously talk to him. Um what he said is I'd qualify as a local year in England in another two years, but at this stage I'll be 31 years old. And while I'd still have some time left, I think my best years are now, he told United Kingdom based PA news agency. So no one broke it yet, it's from the UK. That's why I'm committed to playing for South Africa. I've made up my mind. Another two years just seems too late. If I am doing well and scoring runs and I can't play for England or South Africa, that's just a waste. I'm not sure if I'll do well at that level. Nobody can be sure, but I want to give myself that chance. You don't want to be 33 looking back, wishing you'd given it a short, a short, a shot rather than waiting, 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 and finding your best years are gone. It's about saying I gave it a shot, just getting to that stage and seeing if I can handle the pressure, the glamour, the light. Um, you'll also be joined by Tipu. Um, so Beddingham will be joined by Western Provinces Mati Nabe, who played for the Warriors last season. Western Province have lost three players to the Lions, the most high-profile player being Proteus batter Zubay Ramza. 
uh, and Tepa Morik and Junaid Dawood um, will also be joining um, at the Lions as well. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the information about David Beddingham. Um, the, the story is on Sport24. If you guys want to go back and read it and see his quotes again. Um, but from with regards to this video and with regards to what was said in this video, um, I th think it's a brilliant initiative from a, to have a, a, a coaching conference like they did. I think it gave play the coaches opportunity to obviously share ideas and be on the same page. And, and that's a very important when it comes to instilling or in applying a vision um, for the future. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited that we are on the direction that we are going when it comes to our cricket. Um, it's also good to hear that you, like Lawrence and some of the guys said in the live chat, that there is a sponsor in the works. As soon as I obviously hear anything and it's confirmed, I will do a show about it and we can talk about that sponsorship. Um, I'm not a guy that likes to talk about rumors specifically because I rather like to talk about things that are confirmed because what's the point of talking about a rumor and then it doesn't happen. So then I waste all my time prepare, preparing to talk about a, a possible or probable sponsor. What value does that give to, to anybody? Um, I'll rather talk about what would happen once it's be happened so that we can obviously go forward and start planning and talking about what we want um, from a fan as a fan base and how we want to see the future. Do you think Faf will come into the 2020 World Cup squad based on his IPL form? If so, who should he replace? I would like to see him in, a, in the T20 side for the next World Cup. I'm not so sure based on his IPL form how you can pick him for the 2023 World Cup because they are completely two different formats, different mentalities. You need a different type of um, energy level as well. Faf is older now. Um, can his body still handle 50 over cricket? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. We don't have to ask him how he's feeling. But at the moment, he's smashing it in T20 cricket, which I be do believe is a completely different format to ODIs. I think there are more similarities in um, test cricket and ODI than there is in T20 and ODI, um, in my opinion. Um, although, yes, ODI cricket is getting more and more exciting and more adventurous. I still do believe that there's more similarities between those two formats. So me personally, I wouldn't want to see Faf in the 2023 World Cup squad. I would like to see him in the next T20 World Cup squad. Um, that's where I would like to see him because I do think he can add value to that team because of his, his incredible form and, and his, his winning mentality that he's, that he's built within this format. Have you seen the recommendation coaches made to CSA for the upcoming season, Hardid? Um, I did not see that. Um, I know that in the press release that they gave us, um, the, the coaching manager said that the hosting this year's press conference was important for Division 1 and 2 and the national team coaches as we got together to to look to entrench the brand and philosophy of SA game that has a big impact on how stakeholders view our product. CSA Director of Cricket said it was important that the CSA to hear from coaches, especially this being the first season in the new structure with relegation and promotion. The coaches provide their views on the ever-changing cricket landscape and are committed to working together to enhance domestic product. We've, we look forward to constant engagement with all stakeholders in the system and um, providing platforms for structure engagement and all of those type of things. So that was released in the press release. Um, Lauren saying double round CSA T20 challenge fixtures. They want a uh, cold side back playing and 10 round four day fixtures. Um, that's brilliant. I mean, I would like to see that too. Double round of CSA T20 challenge fixtures. Mm. That's interesting. It's going to be a long ass tournament. Then they want to call. I want to see the cult side back, definitely. Um, especially playing three day cricket 
or four day cricket definitely um 10 round four day fixtures which is brilliant i think that's a brilliant idea um they need to get more games with regards to four day cricket 100 percent to improve that because we are not at the level um that we need to be we're not growing fast enough in our red ball uh, game and we're not exposing our youngsters quickly enough um like i would like anyway guys thanks a lot for tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed this episode please smash the like button please when you come in and press that notification bell for all future videos download the latest issue of cricket fanatics magazine monthly every issue is 100 free straight to inbox every month link is on the screen as well as in the description also become a patron today to help us grow as a community please be in, get involved to support us we need all the help you can get maybe we can get some new cameras maybe we can get some new equipment maybe move to a studio down the future we're going to need your help so please become a patron today and also get involved with super chats in the future shows guys it really helps us um keep things alive um go to cricketfanaticsmag.com also for your regular updates that's also very important and i also heard that they are going to might be thinking about a four-day final i heard a rumor about that um yeah, yes, yeah, Lawrence says that also wants a four-day final too. Yeah, I've heard a rumor about that as well, that they're thinking about a four-day final, which is also brilliant because it kind of prepares them for that to play test cricket with the thought of knowing that you're going to win something. Um, the pressure's on more if it's a final, and it kind of um, it prepares them for what it, the kind of what it's like for a test championship final. So I like that because... You never play a knockout type of game like that, a once-off knockout type of game in Test cricket like that, um, until now with the World Test Championship, unless you play World Test Championships. So if only the top two or three teams play it are in the finals, or top four teams are in the finals all the time, then what's the point, you know? Um, none of the others are going to learn what it's like to actually play in a knockout game um, when it comes to Test cricket. They're only going to know if they play it in the, in the final. So the ones that obviously prepared and have done that and play, understand the pressure, I get a head start. So I think it's a, a smart way to do things going forward. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And we got an interview with Jason Smith tomorrow, live at 7. So please come to the show tomorrow and give your have your say and give your opinions and ask him all the questions that you want in the live chat. I normally want you guys to kind of give me like 15 minutes to this talk to the player first before you bring in your questions because I want to try to answer, ask all of the questions that are asked. And if you want me to not miss it, then you need to stress the super chat or um, you have to do you have to refrain or try and stop yourself from asking questions at the beginning of the show because sometimes I'm going to miss it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily exclusive interview daily show. Peace out.